in the studio with us at the moment, we have a special guest who's joining us today. It's the Honourable Minister Lauren Moss, MLA, Minister for Environment and Natural Resources, Minister for Tourism and Culture, and Minister for Corporate and Information Services. It's good to speak to you again uh, in the studio. It's, uh, it's been not that long, but uh, I'm sure there's been a lot of things that have been happening from yourself, as well as uh, some things that you've been helping develop behind the scenes. Um, so one of the big things, of course, uh, first up is something called Draft Screen Territory Grants. Yes. Yeah. So we've got a really vibrant screen sector here in the Territory. Um, as you'll certainly be aware of, here's some amazing talent. Um, and you can see things like Sweet Country by Northern Territory Director Warwick Thornton getting um, you know, accolades across the world at the moment. Um, so Screen Territory is set up to support our local screen industry and this is providing an opportunity for industry to um, provide feedback on those guidelines that um, exist across a, a range of different programs mm -hmm. um, from things like um, mentorship to the enterprise program so they can provide feedback on that so we can make sure they're really geared towards um, getting the best benefit for the growth of the industry. I see. So it's $9 million million dollars in funding. Um, now, is this available for local art, local artists and people as well? Is it hope to get in people from interstate or even overseas to start filming in the Territory? Yep. So $9 million, million dollars is um, over a period of time to implement a number of recommendations that were made by industry um, about 12 months ago, just over 12 months ago, um, which is around growing the, the industry here. So, you know, for, for me, my focus is absolutely on those local filmmakers, local talent um, but we also do want to continue to support um, you know other filmmakers from other jurisdictions that come up here um, and to um, provide those opportunities for locals as well. For the grants itself the people can benefit locally and does that mean uh, smaller projects can be applied for as well? Absolutely. There's a, a range of different programs that are under this grants program. So I encourage people to get on the Screen Territory website, go and have a look at the draft uh, guidelines that have been released, um, because there are a number of programs and a number of ways in which Screen Territory um, provides support um, to local um, talent, local filmmakers. Mm. Um, and we really would encourage people to make that contact because um, you know, we've got incredible territory stories, um, but even more than that, we've got incredible um, territory storytellers and we need to make sure that we're supporting that. Can it just be stuff like smaller documentaries or larger ones or could it be some sort of film or fictional things? That Absolutely, don't? it can be all of those things. So we see some fantastic, uh, a fantastic variety of projects that come up through screen, um, screen territory from your um, smaller documentaries on um, local, you know, local stories through to um, support that's been given for things like Sweet Country, which is obviously a much bigger production um, that was filmed down in Central Australia with um, people like Sam Neil and um, mm. and you know it's a much bigger bigger scale, but um, it's really fantastic for us to be able to increase the investment in our screen sector. It's an amazing um, economic contributor, and I really feel like the the industry is at a point where um, it needs to be supported. It's going to grow. It's it's an incredible sector. Now, also coming up very very soon is some consultations from mm. our local rangers. Uh, I was reading this the statistics for the numbers. It's uh, over forty actual areas mm. that the rangers cover, Aboriginal rangers, and there's over one thousand that are employed currently in the, in the NT. Um, and can you tell me what this consultation's actually for? At the moment, we've got a discussion paper out that is about um, amending legislation. So we have um, Parks and Wildlife Conservation Act in the Territory. Um, and what we've always said is we think that Aboriginal rangers should be uh, recognised in that legislation for the invaluable work they do right across the Territory and land management. We've got around 46 um, ranger groups and as you said around a thousand um, people employed at various um, levels within those ranger programs is really significant um, and the work that they do um, shouldn't be underestimated really mm. across um, you know weed management, fire management, feral animals. Um, so this is about making sure they're recognised in legislation and that we're working with our ranger groups to um, find out the best way that we can support them enforcing those rules um, around 
their land mm-hmm. um, and assisting them to, to manage that land. So it complements um, the range of grants programs that we've been putting out as well. Um, we do recognise that they're often under-resourced to do the job that they are doing. So we've um, we've had a grants program open for capital items and a program open for um, land management conservation activities as well. They're just being um, assessed at the moment. We've got a fantastic advisory group, uh, and I imagine that those will be announced over the next couple of weeks as well. I've been so lucky to get out and meet um, many of our rangers and see the work that they're doing and that connection to country and that meaningful um, work out right across um, regional and remote areas of the Northern Territory. What are some of the things that they've been asking for or that they're looking to actually help implement in the future? The discussions have just been beginning around um, assisting with enforcement, but, um, you know, things... Uh, happening across the territory all the time around, um, you know, management of hunting activities, for mm. example, might, uh, you know, might be one of those examples of activities that um, rangers are part of enforcing or might come across activity on their land that shouldn't be happening. Um, but in terms of um, projects, there's incredible projects happening across the territory and things like um, carbon abatement and uh, fire management, for example. East Arnhem Land's doing some incredible work across um, carbon abatement pro- programs that I think is uh, up there in terms of being world leading. Um, and this is an opportunity to have a look at how different groups can um, start some of these incredible programs, partner together. Um, so I think it's a really fantastic opportunity. Now, another big thing uh, that I'm sure a lot of people in Darwin are looking forward to is uh, a new museum being hopefully developed and built uh, in the near future. So land development is be happening soon, and it's going to be at the old hospital site, which is near Cullen Bay, just at the top of the hill, basically. Yes, yeah, so the, the Museum of the Northern Territory, which is being um, worked through at the moment with Tropo and ARM, um, the concept for that is having a space on a really significant site in Darwin um, that will tell our social history of, of um, what it is to be a Northern Territorian. Um, we have an amazing um, we have an amazing facility at Bullocky Point, mm-hmm. uh, the Museum and Art Gallery of the Northern Territory. We want something that complements that. I think we have an opportunity to really tell our story here. Um, there are significant parts of our history that have occurred on that site from uh, the Carlin compound was on that site. So mm-hmm. it had significant um, connection to stolen generations. Uh, it's the site of the old hospital. It's yeah. the site of a campus of the Northern Territory University um, some time ago as well, the old nurses' quarters. Um, so many Territorians were born there um, or have significant connections in different ways to that site. So I think this is a really good opportunity for us to come together and tell that story of um, what happened there through things like the Carlin compound right through to our um, Greek Chinese migrant um, history in the Northern Territory as well. And when is the development going to be taking place? So we're just, um, with what's happening at the moment is the concept. So um, Tropo and ARM will be putting a concept out early in the new year. Um, and we'll be looking at the sort of 1920 year uh, around the, the actual construction. But I think the important part is that we need to get that um, the story right and the concept right. So that's the work we're going through at the moment. Let's talk a bit about something that occurred a few weeks back, and mm-hmm. I'm sure a lot of people in the Northern Territory are quite happy to find out that some of the big winners uh, moving on down to Perth uh, next year, it was the Brolga Awards for 2017, and that occurred in Alice Springs on the 11th of November. It was a huge success, from what I understand. It was an absolutely huge night. It was um, fantastic to be in Alice Springs and to see the turnout of not only the industry there, but the, um, you know, the industry from right across the Territory who'd um, travelled to Alice Springs for that event. There were some really big winners on the night. Um, Curtin Springs took out a number of um, different uh, awards on the night. Um, we had Venture North um, and Uluru Camel Tours who won a number of awards as well. They'll be going down um, to Perth, as you say, for the National Tourism Awards. Um, things like Kakadu National Park are mm-hmm. up uh, in categories for um for the national awards and I think that as we have seen in other years uh, the territory will be continuing to punch well above its weight. Before we get going is there any other things that you'd like to uh, mention or talk about or even uh, talk about upcoming for the holiday season? 
Well, there's so much going on yeah. and I'm, I'm really fortunate in the position I'm in to, um, to drive a lot of big projects that we're undertaking as a government. But um, probably one of the, the bigger achievements this year from my perspective has been around the um, strategic Aboriginal water reserves as well within the uh, water policy. Mm -hmm. um, so that's about um, looking at our water allocation plans and making sure that there is water that is available for um, use by Aboriginal landowners for economic development. So that'll go into all of our water allocation plans. We'll be looking to make amendments to the Water Act next year that will add um, strategic Aboriginal water reserves into the, the Act to strengthen that policy. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a commitment that we took to the election. I was very, very pleased to be able to announce um, that that's uh, that will be in place going forward as well. So there's lots happening. Uh, looking forward to a a big year next year um, and just wishing everybody a very um, safe and, and happy, healthy Christmas. Um, you know, it's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger, I think. It's, um, it's a fantastic time of year, so just wishing everyone a Merry Christmas.